Hello and welcome back to part two in our series of videos helping you set up your TerraMaster NAS perfectly the very first time. Now in our first video we talked a lot more about setting up the hardware, getting the hard drives and SSD configurations right and setting up your storage pool and your volumes. Now in this part of the series we're going to be looking at the following. User account creation and control, creating user groups, creating areas of storage accessible from client devices remotely as well as installing applications applications and services and ultimately creating the bedrock for your storage and data moving forward. Now we should highlight that if you look along the bottom of the screen you'll see lots of chapters denoting each of the things that we're going to do in today's video but also know that none of them I repeat none of them need to be done in this exact order indeed all of them can be done in whatever order best suits you and your storage requirements it's just going to change some of the layout of the options throughout the course of the video and you'll see what I mean but otherwise if you haven't quite got your TerraMaster now set up you not right yet go ahead and watch part one first and also later on in this video you will need the TerraMaster TNAS application for PC or Mac systems and you can download that from the download section on their own website which has all of the downloadable apps there ready to go but once you've like logged into your TerraMaster NAS it's always recommended rather than having one solitary login for the system that you actually create several not just because you may have family members you know work colleagues and more access in the system but you may have other services and the last thing you want to do is give different levels of uh, client device too much access not only to the data but the option where they could delete that data or they have access to services and apps which can be detrimental to the system if not handled correctly. So in that world, it is recommended to go for multiple app, uh, app users and um, login credentials. So the first thing we need to do is head into the control panel. From the control panel, we're going to focus on these first two options here. The first one, let's create a brand new user. As you can see, there is the account I've created. The admin account has been disabled. This is my mock admin account here that still has a lot of access and control of the system. Head up here and click create. From there, add your new user. I'm going to call them Alan. From there, give them a description if you need. On top of that, go ahead and give them a password. The password can be whatever you want, but from there, click next. You can decide if this user has a specific amount of storage quota allocated to them, so you can limit that no one user could fully oversaturate your storage if need be, and then click next. Then you can choose what user group they are in, and we'll go into more detail on this later on, but different user groups give a certain different degree of power, which is completely customizable and access to the system. So if you do want to create a bundle of users, perhaps for different client devices that have got only access to a specific subset of data, you can create user groups to pop them into. More on that in just a moment. From there, you can choose which shared area of storage on the system it, this user can then access. So you can choose that they can read only, which means they can see the content of the data there, but they can't edit it, they can't redefine it or delete it, or you can deny it that they won't see that data at all. Again, if you're creating a user or account just for multimedia, it makes perfect sense that you wouldn't give them access, say, to another shared folder which has got your surveillance camera footage or perhaps your backups. Choose whichever one is appropriate to you and we will create more shared folder storage later on and then click next. From there, click confirm and you're ready to go. It's also worth highlighting that if you're going to be utilizing third party applications such as Plex Media Server, I would also recommend creating a brand new user for them. So for example, this is a user I'm going to call Plex. And this means that if I'm going to add access to this NAS from a mobile phone with Plex or from a desktop or a smart TV, I don't have to use my super user credentials to allow access for that client device. I can just ensure that once I go ahead and create a shared folder for my multimedia, that this Plex account is what I use to grant access to it. And it means that say a laptop that may get compromised during a security update or you know, nefariously, if someone gets access to the device outside of my means, they will only have access to that subset of the data via Plex. Now we mentioned earlier on about groups. These are overarching paddocks of users where you can move them around to different levels of access on the fly. So there's our main group there. 
we can go ahead and create a brand new one here. Let's call this one Multimedia. So Multimedia there, we can give that a description. We can click Next. And this Multimedia folder, we can say that we want uh, our main account that we're utilizing now to have access. And we can allow a guest account if we create an ad hoc low uh, risk uh, guest account if we choose. But moreover, we want to make sure that our Plex user login account has access to this new multimedia folder. As you can see, we go ahead and click confirm and that's great. You can create as many user groups really as you want to the thousands. Create some, if you're a business user, for sales, for marketing, for logistics or human resources. And it allows you as new staff members come along to move them in into the appropriate areas. Now, what about creating those appropriate areas, those shared areas? Well, for that, you need to go to shared folder. You can either access it here via the control panel or directly via the file manager heading into the plus symbol there and select new shared folder. The new shared folder is the area of shared storage we're going to create. Go ahead and click create. From there, we're going to give this new area of storage a name. Let's call this multimedia. And this new multimedia area is where we're gonna dump all of our photos, our music, our video, later on in a future part in this video series for multimedia. You can choose if you want to hide this from the local area network. If you do that, it will make dumber devices not really be able to see it, but there are ways and means using media server apps that we'll talk about in part uh, five of this series. But for now, go ahead and click next. You can choose whether you want to encrypt this folder, which will ensure that it can't be moved out of the system without the relevant security key. That's more of an enterprise move that I wouldn't really recommend for your multimedia because it ha can drop performance ever so slightly as well. Choose whether you want to recycle bin. From there, you want to set permissions. So with regards to accessing this, you can change the user access one by one. So our user Alan, our user Plex, Choose it by user group, where the access rights are controlled by those paddocks that you put users into, or only administrators have full read-write access, and everyone else has got read-only access, so they can see and watch the movies, listen to the music if they choose, but they can't edit it, delete it, or amend it in any way. And of course, you can choose no limit if you choose. From there, enable a storage quota, if you like, to ensure that this shared folder can't grow too much out of control. And of course, you can also utilize so, uh, things such as write once, read many, which will allow you via BTRFS file system created volumes to ensure that that data cannot be amended down the line, such as via the course of something bad like ransomware or just simply accidentally deleting or changing a file that for legal reasons you might not want to. I do strongly recommend the utilization of Worm to allow you to store data for years upon years upon years if you need to legally keep records that you can't risk being deleted or amended. So utilize the worm functionality if you choose and that will be really helpful to you. Click next and it will now create our area of shared storage there. The shared storage is now accessible not only on this NAS where we can access it here in the file manager and start adding files and folders if we choose, which we can just drag and drop in if we choose, like so. But on top of that, alongside dragging and dropping, you can manually upload files and folders if you wish. So we'll just add those. Alternatively, as it adds those files, you can also choose to bolt that on to your local client storage device, in this case, a Windows PC. Now, in part three of this series, I will be going to a greater degree of detail on better ways to back up and synchronize data between those multiple client devices. But for now, the most entry-level way to do it is known as mapped drives. This is the means where, for example, on a Windows system, but this does apply to Mac as well, not only have you got your local storage on your local computer, but now you can bolt on the NAS system. Here's how you do it. What you do is leave that file manager, leave the entire web browser and head back into the TNAS PC tool that you utilized in part one of this series. Scan the local area network, find the NAS as you see here, then at the top, select the small folder. What will happen is it will ask you to log in, something I've already done, and the uh, shared network drives that you create will appear here, depending on the level of access you've given to your individual user. So for example, when I created the shared folder earlier for multimedia, 
what we can do is amend the access rights to that, like so, select multimedia. We can then change who can access it, select the permissions, ensuring that uh, users that matter the most have now got access to it. And then that folder will appear along the accessible mapped network drives. Then you simply need to right click and select map network drive on the appropriate drive you want. Assign it a letter in the case of Windows, then click finish. And then boom, now our, T drive, um, our K drive here is now completely accessible. And if we choose to, we can drag and drop files in, put them into this folder here, then we'll be transferred over locally using our Windows File Explorer. But if we make our way back into the NAS, into that public folder, you can see the data I've just uploaded. And then from there, you can view these files and folders on the NAS, it's that straightforward. But as mentioned, this is not the most seamless way to do it. And there are more effective ways to create synchronization between your local client systems for mobile or desktop and the NAS, many of which are available and visible here on the App Center. Now to install applications on the TerraMaster NAS platform, you simply need to select the app that you want to use. So for example, cloud synchronization, an application that allows you to synchronize your Google Drive, your Dropbox and more with your um, TerraMaster NAS, go ahead and click install. It will then download the package, install the application, and then from there, make it accessible to your connected users. Once you've got apps and services installed, once again, go back into the control panel, and then from there, select the tab at the bottom marked applications. And when the applications have finished installing, they will appear on this list. And then from there, you can select individual apps and services, such as file manager, and then you can choose who's got access to it, either on an individual user level or on those paddock groups we created. This is ultimately how you ensure that although you have got the system being accessed by lots of users, that you can make sure that different users have got scaled measures of access and privilege at all times. And for those users that have got a high level of system access, it's always recommended that you head into their individual user tab here, select user settings and enable OTP, otherwise known as 2FA or two-step verification on the system. And these allow you to use mobile applications such as Google Authenticator to add another layer of security when accessing your system via the variety of access methods you are creating. And these can be limited and changed at any time, as well as an admin user having full control over individual users, their passwords, their logging, their user credentials, and more. You can adapt a great many things with individual users, and you can change a lot of those security settings and make them stronger or indeed weaker if need be. Now we're gonna be doing as mentioned, a dedicated video on backup and synchronization. But there you go, that's how to set up individual users and groups as well as tailor their levels of access, create an area of shared storage and how to map it to your client PC or Mac system, and of course, how to install individual apps to the system. Now, we're going to be covering, as mentioned, more on backups and synchronization soon, and in later parts, looking directly at multimedia, specifically to Plex Media Server and multimedia streaming via Media Server, UPnP, and DLNA here on the TerraMaster NAS platform with security down the road as well. As we go through a lot of these steps, I'll try to keep things as chewable and user-friendly as possible. But remember, we have already made a setup guide for TerraMaster NAS some two years ago. So if you can't wait for those new parts to arrive, which they will have upgraded um, uh, a lot of the coverage there in line with TOS 5.1, if you're in a rush, you can still check those out and the salient points will still be covering. There'll just be a lot of the newer stuff missing from those videos. But apart from that, if you do need further support, as mentioned in part one, you can head over to NAS Compares, where we have not only a free advice section on every single page that allows you to get support from me and Eddie completely for free. It may take three to five working days to get in touch because we do get a lot of messages through there, but that's a great way to get free support. Alternatively, use our free NAS builder if you're still on the fence about which NAS you need. Uh, on top of that, you can take advantage of the ask.nascompares community forum 
or you can get expedited support via the free advice section, um, either by utilizing Ko-Fi there, uh, forget a fast track 24 hour reply from us there, go to one of our recommended third and first party forums and um, support repositories, or finally head over to Ko-Fi or Patreon, where on there you can uh, sign up for a one hour Zoom consultation with me and Eddie, or join our monthly membership tier that allows you access to our monthly Zooms, early access to these videos, content polls, and more. And again, that expedited support, you get it as part of your membership. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on part three of this series.